Hey, it's Mario and welcome back to another tutorial. This one is the atmosphere part three, covering properties of the atmosphere. So the atmosphere is a very dynamic system. Understanding how the atmosphere behaves starts with the various properties of the atmosphere. On a local scale, there are three properties that are of interest to us. These are temperature, pressure, and density. Now actually there is a fourth property being relative humidity, but we talked about that in our other video called Why Clouds Form. So be sure to check that out. Okay, so back to the three properties of the atmosphere on a local scale. Let's start with temperature. The temperature of the air is a measure of thermal energy. On a microscopic scale, temperature results from the motion of the air molecules. Faster moving molecules have more energy, and this results in a higher temperature. Now we are interested in temperature because it's one of the things that drives the flow of energy, and therefore the weather in the atmosphere. Okay, so next we have pressure. Pressure is a measure of a force distributed over an area. The source of air pressure is the motion of the air molecules. As the molecules bounce off a surface, they impart a force. The more molecules that hit the surface and the harder they hit it, the larger this force will be. And finally, there is density. Density is a measure of the concentration of mass. It is defined as the amount of mass in a given volume of space. More mass in a given space implies higher density and vice versa. Now, these three properties being temperature, pressure, and density are not independent of one another. If you know any two, you can calculate the third using a law called the ideal gas law. In flight operations, we don't do this calculation because we usually work in the terms of density altitude and pressure altitude rather than density and pressure directly. However, we can use our flight computer to find density altitude if we know the pressure altitude and temperature. Okay, so the atmosphere also has properties that become important when you consider the entire system, rather than just localized pieces of it. The properties of interest to us on a global scale are mobility, capacity for compression, and capacity for expansion. Let's start with mobility. The atmosphere is mobile. This simply means that it can move around. The air can mix, and air in one region can move to another. This is why we can have winds, and why weather can move from one region to another. Next, we have capacity for compression. Well, the atmosphere can be compressed. This means that under the right conditions, more air can be squeezed into the same volume of space. This tells us that the density of the atmosphere is variable. On the flip side, there is also capacity for expansion, meaning the atmosphere can also expand. So a given mass of air can expand to take up more volume. This of course is the opposite process to compression. Okay, so these local and global properties of the atmosphere influence and even sometimes drive the creation of weather. And an awareness of these properties can help us understand and to some extent even predict weather phenomena. So there you have it. We ran through local and global properties of the atmosphere. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and be sure not to miss our next video by liking our Facebook page and subscribing to our YouTube channel. And of course, until next time, onwards and upwards, thanks for watching.